guys, welcome back to some more Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. We are going to the pit shop. Closed until further notice. Abraham isn't there. No luck. Beep beep. Beep beep. <laughs> good evening. Oh, good evening, sir. Do you know why Mr. Solomonovich's shop is closed? No, I don't. Perhaps his cousin, the cobbler, knows. But I believe the police came to take his animals. I think that might have something to do with it. When was this? During the day. He's got the no teeth. Were with the other day were there. They That's why me. he looks like a puppet. They just came by to ask for some cat's meat. They didn't have any money, but I gave them some anyway. Ha. Huh. Is something wrong? It's just that there was a little girl with them, the same age as mine. My little girl who went away with her mother, with the angels into the sky. Dr. Watson told me about your loss. Please accept my condolences. Would you like to talk about it? Uh, how did it happen? The illness, sir. My poor little girl was in agony, and her face and body were ravaged by the disease. Her face? Yes. She looked like a ghost. What illness was it? Dr. Gibbons tried to explain when I took my little girl to see him, but I didn't understand. I'm sure that he was trying to insinuate it was my fault. What I'm the hell sorry, was that? But I don't want to talk about it anymore. I understand. Farewell. Poor guy. Let's go and see Dr. Gibbons. Indeed. Oh, Dr. Gibbons! Open. Why is there just screaming in the street for? This game is retarded. You, don't you have a, like, you're always here. Hello, Doctor. Do you remember me? I'm Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson's friend. Oh, yes. Excuse the mess, but I am doing a bit of tidying. I have come to see you about a Mr. Hardiman, a cat food seller by trade who recently lost his daughter and wife. Yes, I know him. A tragic story. Actually, I was hoping you could tell me about the disease that took his daughter, a disease that would have attacked her face. Well, to keep it short, we are speaking of syphilis, Mr. Holmes. You must certainly know that it is transmitted through intimate connections and that the vast prostitute population here contributes to its inevitable progression. It destroys individuals by spreading through the body slowly. The most obvious symptoms can be found in the genitalia and on the face in the form of pustules or lesions. Sometimes this illness can destroy whole families. The father catches it from a prostitute, he transmits it to his wife, who in her turn passes it to the kids which she bears or nurses. These cases are numerous in the vicinity. Certain children, and this is the case of the little girl whom I won't name, suffer from an emaciation of the face which will, apart from predicting an imminent death, bring infamy upon the family. Mm. Emaciation of the face? Yes, what we sometimes call the pox. I will give you a photograph. One cannot be mistaken on the origin of such a face. The eyes seem to be void of lids. The nose is inexistent, as if it was cut off. And the cheeks are chiselled, as if cut with a knife. This loss of facial matter, this emaciation, is, in this area, often the gift from a father to his children. Can I keep this photograph? I should destroy it. But... If it can remind you that one must sometimes think twice before giving in to physical attraction. I always seem to find myself alone in such cases. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. He's going to put him on his wall next to everything else. Oh, God. I don't want to freak talk. Don't show me that. That's disgusting. That's a child? That doesn't look like a child. Ugh, Let's go to the vomit. cobblers. God. <sighs> disgusting. Let's go to the cobblers. Jesus. I'm like rubbling everywhere. Jacob. Jacob! Hello, Mr. Solomonovich. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How are things with yeah, he's you? He's the one with the accent like that. I heard your cousin Abraham had a problem with his shop. What happened? Ah, uh, if I didn't know you well, I would tell you that it's Jewish business that doesn't concern anyone but the Jews. But as you have a little bit to do with it, you have the right to know what is going on. Ah, would I have something to do with it? Someone had seen Abraham telling you something and making big gestures near the Imperial Club. A vicious rumor quickly spread, 
and that it has caused him great injustice. A slanderous denunciation attracted the authorities' attention to my cousin's shop. Abraham must be in the process of answering their questions. I did, indeed, speak with your cousin the other night. I'm shocked at the consequences of this discussion. As I was saying, it's the story of the Jews. In the face of adversity, we are united, but amongst ourselves, it's like anywhere else. As soon as our people take a dislike to someone, for right or wrong, we can be without pity and quite cruel. Old gate. This is all very worrying. Your cousin knows one or rather two of the men who were at the Imperial Club on the night of the Mitre Square murder. One of the two, a butcher in Aldgate named Joseph, is probably withholding information of the utmost importance. I must find this man. Perhaps you can help me. But there are dozens of Jewish butchers around Aldgate, half of which must be called Joseph. And you know, Mr. Holmes, we Jews prefer to remain in the background of this murderer business, this Jack the Ripper thing. All of London is pointing their fingers at us, saying, It's a Jew who disemboweled these women. Our community is in great peril, you know. There was the business with Lipsky and Leather Apron. Uh, I will see what I can do, but I don't promise anything. I'd be extremely grateful to you. Very extremely well. We may meet again, grateful. Mr. Solomonovich. You are oh, most gross. welcome, sorry, Mr. Holmes. I've paced up and down Whitechapel enough. I should return to Baker Street in order to reflect on the new facts that I have discovered. Let's go to Baker Street. Pipe smoke smells so gross. Hello, it's disgusting. Hello, Watson. The door just closes by itself. I like that. Good day, Watson. Listen, Holmes, I know I should have got here sooner to give you a report on my research, but this case has led me to neglect my patients and my wife more than I care to admit. I've been able to sort things out over the last few days, and now I am ready to pursue this investigation. You don't have to justify yourself, Watson. Whilst I do tolerate you as an observer, and despite your occasional help with more menial tasks, may I remind you that you are by no means an indispensable part of this case. Oh, you tolerate me as an observer, <laughs> do you? Oh, you're too much, Holmes. Well, Mr. Detective, despite my absence, I have been working on this case, putting my relationship Mr. on the line Detective. in the process. And I happen to have a confidential letter that only passed from one Lord's hand to another. What it contains is extremely serious and concerns Dr. Tumblety and his collection of uteri. Let me see that. Please. My lord, be here by sure of my entire collaboration. The affair to which I must reply, no one will be able to cast opprobrium on our institution or ourselves. Uh, we must avoid that. Lord. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This American could turn out to be of great use to use. That's right. And that's not all. I did some research and finally found an illness that affects the genitalia and can, in certain cases, You're a doctor. cause How do you facial not symptoms know this? resembling the mutilations seen on the last victim. It is called, would you believe? Syphilis and the emaciation that can be seen in affected children. I have known that for days, Watson. Really? Listen, now you're already <laughs> here, Watson, we may as well continue the investigation. Do you remember the map on which we established the area in which our killer lives? I think we should continue our study. Okay, this map here. Well, I discovered the case of another murder before that of Bucks Row. It happened in George Yard. We shall put it on the map in order to see if it corresponds to our area of research. We must place the murder of Martha Tabram in George Yard on the map. Yeah, wasn't she? I thought she was a victim. That is a, where a Martha Tabram's murder took place. There's no point going there. I already have all the information we need on that matter. 
You see, this murder took place in the area in which our killer lives, his safe zone. Nonetheless, there are two major differences between the murder of this Martha Tabram and that of Polly Nichols. Firstly, the blows inflicted are not the same. And the second difference? It follows on from a doctor's opinion. He claims two weapons might have been used, and if there is one group of people we absolutely must not trust in this business, it's doctors. Don't you agree, Watson? Watch it, Holmes. <laughs> Tabram's murder took place in an area where the murderer, whose cowardice is clear, was able to make a quick getaway, that is to say, near his home. For his second murder, he would have wanted to go further afield, so the police would not link these two cases. And as for the other murders, seeing the ineffectiveness of his last one, he headed in different directions to kill his victims while still staying in the vicinity and without going any further than necessary, and all the while planning his escape. My dear Watson, we now know what this man looks like, in what area he lives, and that he suffered directly or indirectly from syphilis. Let's not forget the anatomical knowledge he must almost certainly possess. Given his lower class background, a butcher seems very likely. However, it may be the case that the man was a butcher once, but is no longer. He might also have been a medical assistant. Who knows? That's why we need the testimonies of the other Joseph and Dr. Tumblety in order to be certain. What shall we do, Holmes? As the police's cooperation is futile and can be ruled out, we have nothing to do but wait. Watson, wait, and hope we see one of these two men before the killer strikes again. That was awful, she meant, wait, Watson, wait, <sighs> like, you know. At last, a long day's work done. November 8th. How are you doing, Holmes? Fine, Watson, just fine. I suppose you still haven't heard any news from Whitechapel? No, Watson. It's been almost a month now. Who knows, our killer may have brought justice upon himself, overcome by remorse and ignominy for his actions. I doubt it. Not a chance, Watson. Uh, you haven't done anything about the story of a kidney that was sent in the post and reported by the papers. Why not? The killer left a message on one occasion with the intention of harming. The letter accompanying this package served no purpose other than to give value to its recipient and arouse disgust against its sender. The killer has never done anything for nothing. In order to authenticate the Galston Street message, he left an indisputable piece of evidence. Can we really say as much about this kidney? I don't know. All I know is that there are letters piling up on your desk. Isn't it time to move on to another case? Absolutely not, Watson. I think that the other Joseph is reluctant to meet me. The man he saw must certainly have put the fear of God in him. A man well known for his violence and his hatred towards Jews. There can't be any shortage of those in Whitechapel. I have hope yet. As for Dr. Tumblety... We found him, Mr. Holmes. We found him. Who's that? Dr. Bumblebee. He's been <laughs> locked up by the Bobbies. But they've let him loose. Oi! He was looking round like a rat who's scared of his own shadow. He's going to do a run at years. Watson, this is our chance. The game is afoot. Let's hope that Tumblety will go to collect his trunk. As for you, my little friends, thank you for lifting this burden that has been on my shoulders for almost a month. <laughs> Give us something to eat, man. Um. Finley! He is here. The doctor is here, up in his room. Peeking through my door, I saw him go up the stairs, and I think that he has a pistol. Regarding oh, the trunk, did you do what I told you to? Yes, I jammed the lock and filled the trunk with stones. Should we call the police? Absolutely not. Go home, lock your doors, and if you hear a gunshot, shout as loudly as you can. Watson, we must disarm this man at all costs before attempting to confront him. Come, have your pistol at the ready and stay alert. What if, like, Watson didn't bring his pistol? I got a box of matches, so you better be cool, man. Oh, jeez. Don't move a muscle or I shoot. Who? But what is going on? Bravo, Watson. I take back everything I ever said about your less than full involvement Look in our investigation. He's so ugly. Listen, Mr. Policeman. I already told everything Policeman. to your colleagues at the station, so... Don't you believe it, sir. We're not with the police. We are here to talk about human organs, an area in which you seem to have a great deal of interest. What? But who are you? 
We are the ones holding the pistol. Listen, Tumblety, tell us everything you know and you will be spared from the noose or a bullet. Have you tried to get hold of any female genitalia from someone during these past months? <laughs> so that's it. You English. Listen, as it happens, I do have a collection of female genital organs which I hold dear and never miss the chance to show my friends whatever the occasion. If you knew what I feel when my eyes meet the young men's as they contemplate with astonishment and disgust this soft and flabby skin that they worship and place at the center of all their That's passions. disgusting. Women repulse me, gentlemen. They are one of nature's greatest mistakes. Lying, haughty, and most of all, nauseating. Shoot him in the face no, right sirs. now, Watson. Right Men, now. Mankind. We are not made to soil ourselves with such animals. And it is my task to educate my peers, like the ancient educate. Greeks used to do, and put them on the path to masculine relationships. The only kind worthy of our intelligence. My God, this man has lost his marbles, Holmes. You Whoa. haven't answered my question. His Did eyes you just went white. Did you see that? Female organs? Indeed. But a long time ago, I was living in Liverpool at the time. A few of my specimens were starting to lose their freshness. But despite the sum proposed, the heads of the university hospitals refused to accede to my demands. Good. The fear of what others would say, certainly. I know nothing more similar to an arrogant fowl than an English doctor. Yakety yak, always showing off in the courtyard with their haughty airs. And as soon as shut it, Tumblety. <laughs> so was it you who killed all of these women? Yes or no? I regret to say that it was not. If I had really wanted a few more uteri, I would have had them brought in from the United States, where it would cost me much less than here. Or I would have shown a few gold coins in the hallways of a morgue or a hospital in London, and they would have kissed my feet to sell them to me. And not taken the least risk. The kidneys are all the latest, aren't they? I think that I could find one tomorrow for less than a pound. In short, gentlemen, I do not know your killer, and I don't know why he's doing that. But if you come across him one day, please send him my friendship and my deepest respect. What You've a You've gone dick. too far this time. Come, Watson, let's not get carried away now. Thank you for your assistance, Doctor. If I may offer some advice, you should leave England as soon as possible. Each day that you remain in this country is a risk that an intelligent man would not take. My pistol? Without that, it will be even more risky. Can we believe this man, Holmes? He can't be the murderer, and his story regarding the organs fits. But we can't afford to take the slightest risk. I will ask the Baker Street Irregulars to follow him. Listen, lads, when Tumblety leaves here, follow him discreetly, and come and tell me as early as possible tomorrow where he is currently residing. Understood? Understood, Captain. Captain? You are already ready, Holmes. What is going on? I have been waiting for you for at least an hour, Watson. It would appear that a new drama has unfolded. The youngsters came to give me this address, but I have some doubt as to the actual location we are going to. Let's try anyway. At worst, we may come across the Baker Street Irregulars to put us in the right direction. We are lost, Holmes. No, we're not, Watson. We are heading for the very street I'd hoped for, but as I wasn't sure it was this one, I've made a few big detours in order to find the right one. I'll know it when I see the name. Why, of course, Holmes. Why didn't I think of that? The great Sherlock Holmes can't... Okay, guys, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, I might cut it a bit short, but I know this is probably gonna be a long part, and I don't, I don't like going over the time limit. So, um, we're almost finished the game, actually, so, uh, look forward to some more. Thanks for watching!